Hello, and welcome to my world of conversation around math topics. My name is Amber Soto. I'm the director of mathematics for ILEAD schools. And today's topic is math transformations. So let's dig into a definition. The official definition of a transformation is a process that manipulates a polygon or other two-dimensional object on a planar coordinate system. Mathematical transformations describe how two-dimensional figures move around a planar coordinate system. A pre-image or inverse image is the two-dimensional shape before any transformation, and the image is the figure after the transformation. So what does that mean? Well, we can put it a little more simply. Transformation means to change. So in math, we focus on how two-dimensional geometric shapes can change or move around in a planar grid. Your two-dimensional shape before any change has occurred is called the pre-image. And then after the transformations have been applied, you get the image and that's your ending point. All right, there's a lot of different ways that you can change two-dimensional geometric shapes, but right now we're gonna focus on four specific transformations. And those are dilation, reflection, rotation, and translation. So let's start off with dilation. If you're like me, when you hear the word dilation, you probably think of the pupils in my eyes. So we have a kind of creepy, but kind of cool picture here where you can see that one eye has a pupil that's dilated or bigger than the other. In geometry, dilation is when the size of an image is either increased, gets bigger, or decreased, gets smaller without changing its shape. This is also called shrinking for getting smaller or enlarging for getting bigger. Moving on to reflection, and it is also what you would probably think of it in the real world. When I think of reflection, I think of a beautiful reflection on a lake or in a mirror where you can see the image on the other side. Similarly, in geometry, reflection is when we flip an image along a line, which is called the mirror line, and the flipped image is called the mirror image. Moving on to rotation, and again, it'll probably be what you think of as rotation. We know that planets rotate, and so here we have a beautiful picture that appears like the stars are rotating around a fixed point. Windmills also ro rotate, and ice skaters, I always love watching the ice skaters where they do the really, really quick turn around that fixed point and they go super fast. And even fidget spinners, these are all great examples of rotation. In geometry, rotation is when we rotate an image around a fixed point, either clockwise or counterclockwise, by a certain degree. And finally, we have translation. In geometry, translation is when we move an image without changing its shape, size, or orientation. This is often referred to as a slide because that's really what we're doing. We're taking the shape, we're not changing it, we're just sliding it moving it in any direction we wanna go, but we're not changing the shape, size, or orientation. So let's see some examples using transformation golf in Desmos. This is transformation golf. You can see the pre-image here is purple and the image here is white. We wanna start here and end up here. So just like a hole in one in golf, we wanna get the pre-image into the outline of the image. Maybe not in one, but in as few tries as you can, that's the challenge. There are obstacles. You can see the gray lines here and further on there'll be gray blocks. If you hit those, it will cause your pre-image to crumble. Now I'm not gonna complete the challenge. I'm just gonna show you how to use the tools. So let's start with dilate because that is where we started earlier. So if you wanna dilate something, you're making it either grow or shrink, right? So we have to choose a scale factor. I'm gonna choose four right now, just so you can see what happens when we hit the gray line. Also, you have to move the fixed point to where you want the enlargement to happen. So here we go, and boom, it cracks. So it sends us back and says, nope, that didn't work. We have to try again. So I'm gonna enlarge it now by a scale factor of two. You can see that it grows by a scale factor of two. Now remember that dilation is not just about enlargement we can also shrink things down. And so instead of finding a scale factor of a whole number, we would use a fraction or a decimal to shrink it down. So here I'm gonna use 3 tenths, which is written as 0.3, 3 tenths. And I'm going to put my fixed point right on that L. And then you'll see it'll shrink it down to about a third of the size of where it originally was. 
Another thing I want to point out is that you can always cancel out the previous move. So if you do that and you say, that's not what I meant to do, you can exit out and it jumps back to what it was before. Okay, so using the dilate button one more time, I'm gonna bring it back to its original size. We did times two of a scale factor to get where it is. So I'm gonna do one half to undo that, which is written as 0.5 or 5 tenths. So again, I'll put my fixed point and we're gonna scale it back down to its original size and look at what we can do next. Next is reflect. Reflect gives us this line with the two points and we can put that line wherever we want and it will reflect over that line as if it's a mirror. Remember, this was also called the mirror line. Look at it go. And you see now it's backwards. It's the mirror image that it reflected over that line. Now we can also reflect right through the L. So you'll see here, this bottom part will flip up and this top part will flip down. Just like that, it reflects on top of itself. Um, and you can also do reflections that are diagonal. So if I wanna do this and I can submit and it'll flip it right across that line. Okay, so those are some of the fun things you can do with reflect. Now we're gonna move on to rotate. Now again, for rotate, this, the fixed point matters. So for example, if I start where I'm at and I leave the fixed point there, and then you choose clockwise or counterclockwise, I'd like it to go clockwise. And then you put the amount of degrees, I'm gonna put 180. And then watch, this point here won't move. Everything else will rotate around it. Ready, watch. Did you see that? It just rotated around that point. Whereas if I put the point instead on the heel of this L, and then I say, I wanna go counterclockwise, and I'm gonna go, let's say 45 degrees. And you see it rotates just on the heel. So wherever you put that fixed point, matters a lot because that's where the rotation is going to occur. And then choose clockwise, counterclockwise, and your degrees. Finally is translate. Translate was just the glide, the slide, remember? So we have our starting point, an arrow that tells us the direction we're going to go, and our ending point. So wherever you place this, let's say I'm going to place it there. And then wherever you place this, let's say I'm going to place it there. That means this point on the tip of the purple L will end up there. Here we go. You see that? Now, again, you don't have to have it on the L. If I use this and I put it like this, it means this whole L is gonna go one, two, three, four spaces up, just like that. So translate, the big thing to remember is you always put the point where you want to start and then you put the ending point where you'd like that point to end and then it will slide the whole thing. And then remember, you can always undo it by Xing out the previous steps, okay? So I hope you have fun with that now that you know how to use the tools. I wish you luck on this challenge. And in the meantime, I wanna show you one fine little thing to end. And that is with our dear friend, Mario. You can see here that Mario is going on a mission. He is translating to the right, to the left and up. Although every time he turns, it looks like he's reflecting on his back, right? But other than that, this is a lot of translate. And now reflect and reflect and reflect. Every single time that mirror line changes, the mirror line is kind of in between the two places where he is reflecting, the two little elevators, right? And then watch this here. He comes up, he comes down, and he's going to rotate 90 degrees so he can have a different perspective of the world. So the only one we really didn't see in this was dilate, but in Mario Brothers, if they eat a mushroom, they grow bigger. If they're hit by a turtle shell, they shrink down. And so we can see all four, just not in this particular clip. Another place is Tetris. Tetris, as the pieces are falling down or you move them side to side, that is translation. And if you hit the button to turn it so you can fit it in the shape below, that is rotation. So there's a lot of places we can see this. Um, I know Minecraft is big right now. I am sure you can do every single one of these in Minecraft. Um, so with that thought, I wanna leave you with this. Where are some places that you have seen transformations in real life? And once you've had that discussion, then I invite you to go ahead and try the transformational golf on Desmos and have a good time doing it. All right, that's enough from me. Happy mathing, everyone.